It has come to my attention that Illustrator has a new 3D tool. I love this. I found this tweet while I was prepping for the video this morning and uh, really made me laugh. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and Adobe Illustrator, like all of Adobe's programs, release new features pretty much every fall like clockwork. And it's really easy for many of those new features to just kind of fly under my radar and I don't really notice them. It, this is a great example of that. So they've been adding in these 3D features that let you do some pretty interesting stuff. And if you're intimidated by something like Blender, but you just need to make some small 3D elements for a design or something like that, or part of an illustration, it works really well. Before we start, I want to shout out today's sponsor, Best Buy. Using these 3D rendering features in Illustrator can be pretty resource intensive. Lucky for you, Best Buy's President's Day sale is going on right now. They have some great hardware and even better prices that will help you breeze through this processing. Before picking up any kind of electronic, whether it's a laptop, a tablet, a TV, video games, anything, I always check out Best Buy first. They're always adding new deals, they're rotating things in and out, there's always something worth seeing. You can become a Best Buy Total Tech member, which gives you even more exclusive deals along with tech support, worry-free product protection, free standard installation, delivery, and haul away. There's also the Best Buy price match guarantee. Find something cheaper elsewhere, Best Buy will match that price. They can get your product to you fast, or if you need it even sooner, you can just stop by your local store and pick it up. Check out the link down below in the description to see Best Buy's President's Day sales today. I'm going to come here and I'm going to scooch over off my canvas and let's start with this circle in the background here. I'm just going to move it over here so you can see some of these 3D material things. There's this little toolbar off to the side that I pulled out. If you don't have this, if you go to window and then right here at the top of the list, 3D and materials, that's how you open it up. With an object selected, you can turn it into a 3D object. There's a plane, there's extrude. I'll go ahead and click on that so you can easily see what it does. There's revolve, and then there is inflate. And inflate is one of the more interesting things and, and one of the wonkier things as well. Uh, as I scroll through my options here, we can change the depth of that so I can make this kind of a, a pill shape. And there's there's the volume, which is when it's set to 100, it's going to round everything up. It's going to inflate everything up. But if I kind of tone it down, you can see this becomes really cylindrical. Now let me scroll down here. We have some rotation options. There's a whole bunch of presets. You can go in and use this tool right here to rotate it yourself and play with it however you want. What's kind of cool is there's a bunch of presets here already, so you don't have to think about it. If I just want a front view of that cylinder, I've got it. Uh, it was off axis front, which is nice because it gives you that 3D effect off axis top, but there's also isometric right, isometric left. Let's go back up to the top of this tab. I'm gonna go here to materials. And right now I just have my base material. It's it's pretty boring. It's kind of like this kind of glossy plasticky look. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff, uh, Adobe substrate materials. And most of these look a little, a little wonky, you kind of have to play with the properties and, and kind of understand this a little bit to make it look good. Uh, the, the last tab I want to take a look at is lighting. Before I do that, let me turn my default back on. Let's go over to the lighting tab. Now, now we have several options here, and this is where this starts to get interesting and where you can get some really cool, you know, rendered objects out of Illustrator. So first of all, there's a, there's a handful of presets. You have standard, you have diffuse, you have top left, and basically this is right. What it's doing here is it's changing the position of your light. So I'm gonna go back to standard and you can change the color of that light. Like if I want a red light hitting this thing and I click okay, you're gonna see that top light over from the right is reflecting kind of a reddish tone to it. But you can also use these sliders down here to change stuff. Like I can change the intensity. So if I want this really bright, I can go up really high. I'm gonna go back down to 70. I can also change the rotation. So those presets already have like the rotation and the height of your light set. But if you want to, you can go in here and play with that uh, to your heart's content. I could change the height of where that light is. Uh, I can also come in here and change the softness or hardness of that light. There's a checkbox for ambient light. Also, there's uh, adjustment for intensity. Now, this is a little bit different than the color intensity, which was just adjusting that one light. So when you adjusted this top intensity, that light was getting brighter, which made your shadows darker, whereas the intensity for your ambient light instead is kind of making the entire object lighter or darker. It's like how much light is in the room around you. And then the last thing we have down here is shadow. So I'm gonna click that on. So one thing I can do is I can adjust like my rotation show, so my shadow is in a different place. I can adjust the height of my light, which is also gonna change my shadow. You can also change the distance 
your shadow is from your object. So if your object is floating, you know, where is that shadow going to appear if you increase the distance? The last thing I want to show you, and this is where I think things get pretty cool, is there's this little icon down here. Um, I'm hovering over it now. It says render with ray tracing. Yes, please. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to take a minute to do its progress thing. Okay, you can see a couple things happening here. One, you're actually seeing that material. It looks so much better. It doesn't look like it's you know, weird 3D, it's actually rendering this thing. The other thing you're seeing is that our shadow is changing a little bit here. Let me select that. Uh, the shadow, because it's going into the distance, that shadow's getting blurrier as you're getting further away. I'm gonna change the distance of the object to zero, and then I think it's gonna re-render for me. Yep, there we go, that, that gives you a better idea of the shadow. Is that even on a good computer, this this can lag on you, especially once you turn on the rendering. So this is not like the fastest thing in the world. And as I had more objects running at one time and I had more stuff going on with more shadows, Illustrator crashed on me several times. So it's not, if you're thinking you're gonna do something really detailed, be careful there. Okay, so now that we understand the tools a little bit, I'm gonna walk you through the steps I took to basically make the thumbnail for this video. How I took my avatar and drenched it into that 3D token looking thing. So first things first, I have this all in vectors. So as I play with each shape, you can see uh, that that I can move them around, they are all separate, and that's important. You can't just come in here you know, with a Photoshop file or a JPEG or something like that. It needs to be a vector file. Now what I could do is I could highlight this whole thing and just immediately turn it into 3D and just turn it into a 3D plane and then just start moving stuff around. I could totally do that, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna be a little more detailed with it, and that's because as I've been experimenting with this, I've discovered that I don't want everything to be 3D. I want some things to be planes. I want some things to be inflated. You'll see in a second. So I'm gonna start with this white circle, which you can't see because it's on a white background. And we're gonna go ahead and we are going to inflate it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my rotation preset to uh, isometric top. Go back up here and I'm gonna change my volume. I'm gonna make this like 20%. That looks good. I'm gonna bring over my neck ob next object, inflate that, I'm gonna set that to 20%, come down here, change that to isometric top. So this is a bit of a manual process. And as I go through it, I may like that bottom piece being thick. But that top piece, I want to be a little bit narrower so I can change the volume. I could also change the depth of that. There we go. And then I could just kind of position it so that it looks good. I'm going to start bringing over the bigger pieces. Now, what I've done here is I've made the black outline of the head just a big solid shape. I took a bunch of groups and I merged them together. We're going to do the same thing again. This one is going to be inflated. We'll make this one 15. And then let's go to isometric top. There we go. Now this is one of those where before we actually render it out, it just looks solid black. You can't see anything else. So we could do a couple things here. Uh, I can come in here and make this a shade of gray so that it's just easier to see, or I could go ahead and render it. And this time uh, I am gonna take several shapes at once because I don't have to do everything one at a time. I'm gonna take these solid shapes I'm going to inflate them. Sometimes it lets me change the variables on those shapes all at the same time. Sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of uh, kind of picky like that, but I'm just going to set each one of these to 15. And then I'm going to go into each one and uh, and flip it. Um, I would love to do this like with many pieces at once, but it's for whatever reason, it's not letting me right now. Okay, they are all isometric top. And again, I'm moving these pieces into place. And I might have to zoom in to do this, but I'm, I'm doing it kind of quickly because there's a few things that I want to show you here. There we go. This is looking pretty good. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is pieces, parts overlap, and it's weird. I want this hair to be behind the head. So even if the hair is in the right location, it's weird. So what I can do here is I can right click on it, go down to a range and say, send backward. And I could do that over and over again. There's actually a keyboard shortcut for it. Command back bracket, command open bracket. That's going to let me put it where I want to put it. And then I could maneuver it to where I need it to be. And that looks that looks pretty good right there. Now, a lot of this stuff, what I found with these details is like a lot of these lines, I don't want each and every one of these lines 
to be extruded like some of the other things. I just want them to be detailed. So this is one of those instances where I'm just gonna take everything all at once. I'm gonna select it all, gonna duplicate it here, and then I am going to group it. And now I can say, turn that into a plane, come down here, change that to isometric top. And now I could just move that exactly where it needs to be. And it's just gonna sit perfectly you know, on top of my little character there. Now, again, things are going to need finagled. Like this is teaching me that like my hair's in the wrong place and that sort of thing. But I'm not going to worry about those details too much. Now, my original design, I had the eyes being 3D as well. I think for the sake of time, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to grab all of those elements and going to command G to group them all. And then I'm just going to turn these into a plane. You guessed it. We're going to turn it to isometric top and just move it into place. Oops, I double grabbed my eyebrows, but that's all right. We'll work around that. Now, I'm not going to light everything. I'm not going to shadow everything. But for fun, I'm just going to go ahead and now start rendering things with ray tracing. Uh, I'm going to grab the bottom of the token first. I'm going to hit that. It already looks better. It looks white. It looks shiny. I'm going to change the lighting to diffuse. That means you've got a larger overhead light. You're getting softer shadows underneath. I'm going to go ahead and toggle on those shadows. I can change the height of that if I want. That can lead to some pretty cool things like that. Maybe I grab another layer. I'm going to turn on rendering for that as well to get my nice shininess. I'm going to turn that to diffuse. I'm going to toggle that shadow on as well. Maybe I even reduce the height of where that shadow is coming from. So I could come in here and continue to add shadows and continue to render it. But that's basically how you could go about building something that's that's pretty cool. And even though this doesn't have anywhere near the detail that you can get in Blender with their 3D tools, I think if you just need to do some simple 3D things, it's way easier to learn this and play around with this than it is to play around in Blender. What do you think? Did you know Illustrator had these tools? How come you didn't tell me? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.